I recently got my hands on the Boss ME90, and my first question was, what exactly is it? Is it a multi-effects pedal? Is it an amp modeler with effects? Or is it a guitar recording interface? Well, let's plug it in and find out. Well, spoiler alert, this is all of those things. The true boss fashion, they anticipate all sorts of different use case scenarios, and the ME90 is no exception. So I'm gonna take you through this device, I'm gonna show you some tones, I'm gonna show you some features of this device, and I've got some tips for you that might save you from pulling your hair out. guitar multiple effects short changes a little bit yes there's lots of effects in here you've got 60 boss effects in here and you've got 11 of the AIRD amp models those are the high-end amp models that boss offers across their higher end products you get 11 of them here and on top of it it is a four channel audio interface this is a more affordable option in comparison to things like the GX100 and the GT1000 now there are some trade-offs in terms of features but the quality of what you get here is on par with the higher end devices as a plug-in and go modeler with effects, you can select from 11 amps in the preamp section. These are modeled with built-in cabs, but you can customize these with your own IRs. More about that later. Each of the seven effects categories gives you multiple options to choose from and a ton of onboard controls. The expression pedal functions as a volume pedal, but also has a number of options like wah and pitch shifting effects. You can operate the ME90 in memory mode where the foot switches help you navigate between banks and individual presets, or you can go manual and it functions much like a pedal board where you can turn different effects on and off and customize each effect as you like. Now, one thing that you don't have on the ME90 is a screen, but it's not a problem because you can connect it to your computer via USB and you've got the Boss Tone Studio. You've got deeper editing capability. You've got visualization of your presets and the ability to build and edit your presets is I think a lot easier to do on a computer anyways. Now, Boss does anticipate that different players are gonna hook this up to different devices and gonna amplify it differently. And there's a couple of features that you need to know because depending on what you hook it up to, it could sound different. You know, whether you're going, like I said, with headphones, you could be going into an amplifier, but you're going into the input stage or you're going through the effects loop. In every scenario, it's gonna sound a little bit different. But there's a couple of settings on the ME90 in conjunction with the Boss Tone Studio that you need to know about before you start dialing in some tones. The first is this switch on the back. You've got a guitar amp mode and a line mode. So you need to make sure this is set to the right mode depending on what you're hooking this up to. If you're going into the line input on an interface or PA, even headphones, you'd switch this to line. But if you're going into an amp, then you need to make sure this is switched to guitar amp. But it doesn't stop there, and this is really important. You can optimize the output of the ME90 for different setups. In Boss Tone Studio, click the system button and then output setting, and then you have a number of profiles to choose from. There are options for plugging into the input of different amps, as well as the return. These are kind of generic, so you need to cycle through them to see which one works best for your setup. So I just set mine up with the Rev G20. I'm going through the effects loop. I'm in the return. And I found that the Katana 100-212 return actually sounded the best to my ears. So I do recommend you going through them, find the one that sounds better uh, with your particular setup. And you're definitely gonna wanna do this uh, before you start tweaking your tones because you'll find you'll have a lot of frustration if you do this after the fact. 
And if you do get this wrong uh, out of the box, you might think there's something wrong with your ME90, but I assure you there isn't. Just make sure to set this correctly. Another thing that you need to understand about the Boss ME90 is that the placement and order of the different effects is pretty much predefined, but there are some variations on that. Now, specifically with the compressor block, which doubles as effects one, so you can sub out your compressor with a, a number of other effects uh, that you can choose with the rotary dial or through Boss Tone Studio in the pull down menu. EQ section as well doubles as another effects block. And uh, the modulation section, uh, depending on the effect that you choose, it's going to relocate that block to the most logical place as determined by Boss. Uh, but you'll have to play with that to see, you know, which uh, effect comes when, again, depending on which effect that you choose. The other thing is, is there is an effects loop uh, in the ME90, so you can plug in some other pedals. So if you're the kind of player that wants to push a delay into your amplifier, well, you can run it into the effects loop. And there's also a setting where you can change the placement of the effects loop. Uh, before or after the amplifier. So there is quite a bit of flexibility here. Like I said, not as much editability compared to maybe one of the higher end devices, uh, but there are definitely options here. Now, if you like using real amps as I do, uh, you can definitely use this as a multi effects device. Now, if you take this and plug it into the input of your amplifier, all of these effects are gonna happen before the preamp. Now, if you're like me and you like your reverbs and delays and things like that after the preamp, well, as long as your amplifier has an effects loop, you run it through the effects loop, all the effects on the ME90 are gonna be after uh, the preamp. But what if you want some effects before and some effects after? Can we do that? Well, absolutely we can. It's called the four cable method. This will allow you to place things like boosts and things in front of your amp and uh, delays and reverbs and things like that after your amp. Let me show you how to hook that up. To do this, your guitar amp needs to have an effects loop. Here's how you set it up. Connect the left mono output on the ME90 to the return on your amplifier. Then take the send on the ME90 and connect it to the main input on your amp. The return on the ME90 connects to the send on your amp, and then you plug your guitar into the input on the ME90. Looking at Boss Tone Studio, there are a couple of other things we need to do. First, we need to turn the preamp block off because we are using our physical amp. Secondly, the send return block is where your amp is in the signal chain. So you can see what effects are before and after the preamp in your physical amplifier. If you go back to the settings, you can change the placement of the send return, which is now your amp to pre or post. This will place the expression pedal when set to volume before or after your amp. But if you choose one of the other expression pedal effects, forget everything I just said, it's gonna place the pedal in a predefined place. <laughs> Now lastly, and certainly not least, is the ME90 is also an audio interface connected via USB. You've got four recording channels here. Now the first two channels are gonna record your full preset and stereo, so you can send that uh, to two channels or to a stereo input. And then the, the remaining two channels actually will record a clean DI. So if you like recording real amps, if you like using plugins, uh, you can really dig in, use it as a scratch track, because that's the one sort of disadvantage of recording DI sometimes. If you don't have any tone at all, you just can't get inspired. Uh, if you're recording through plugins, sometimes you might get some latency, uh, but this way your full signal chain is processed here on the ME90. You can record that full patch and then you can turn off some of the effects if you just want to record the guitar tones. But in addition to that, you get the DI tracks recorded at the same time. So if you want to reamp, you want to add you know, plugins later, 
it's a real awesome way to work. And it's added some functionality that I actually didn't have here in my studio. So I'm pretty excited about that. Now, before I call it a day, there's a couple more features that I want to share with you that I think are worth noting about the ME90. You can load your own IRs onto the ME90 via the ME90 IR loader app. Then you can change the cab IRs in the output block. Original are the cabs modeled with bosses and models, or you can choose from up to three custom IRs. And lastly, there's a setting that alters how the pedal reacts in memory mode. When you bank up and down, you can see the pedal indicators flashing. This is asking which preset you want to activate. In Boss Tone Studio, if you go to System, Play Option, and change the setting in memory from bank and number to immediately, then when you bank up and down, the last active preset slot will remain active. This allows for faster switching between presets. Well, I have to say I'm really impressed with the Boss ME90. Now, I think you need to put this in perspective if you're, if you're evaluating a product like this. Boss has a lot of different products at different price points, and you're gonna get more features the higher you go up uh, the budget scale. But for what is about 350 US dollars, having 11 of Boss's top-end ARD amp models, uh, 60 Boss effects, these are Boss effects people, uh, Boss <laughs> are the king of effects, let's face it. And you've got an audio interface built in, you're gonna spend two, $250 for a decent audio interface. So if you're looking to set up a home recording setup, primarily for guitar and things like that, you're gonna get a lot of mileage out of this device. In fact, I made some changes on the desk. This is gonna be my new front end for recording guitar. I love the fact that I can record some tones or a full signal chain out of the ME90. And I can also record DI tracks at the same time. That's exactly what I needed here in my studio. So I'm really excited to add that functionality here. And I look forward to spending more time with this. But ultimately, it's not just up to me. I highly recommend you get your hands on it. Check it out at your local dealer. Uh, if you are convinced you wanna purchase one, I do have an affiliate link in the description. Uh, purchase there, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it will kick a little something back to the studio and I appreciate that. But ultimately, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you have any thoughts, any questions at all, uh, let me know in the comment section. And if you did enjoy it, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. And I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, if you made it all the way to the end, I'd love to know who you are. Perhaps you can let me know in the comments. Uh, don't forget to check out another video. I've got one waiting for you right here. And the description is full of all sorts of ways to support the channel. Affiliate links, I'm on Patreon, and I've got merch. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video.